Shalom, shalom. Uh, good morning. Shabbat, 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 shalom. Happy Sabbath. Um, happy rest day. Right for all those who you know, what I'm saying, recognize the Lord's holy day on the seventh day of the week. Shalom, shabbat, shalom. All right. So today's video, I'm gonna go over. Um, should we be preparing? Are you crazy or are you a bug out for preparing for the end times? Right. Because we know there's a lot of people making videos, a lot of people um, giving their opinions based off of scripture on what you should be doing. Right. So I'm going to go into scripture, too, and get a, a few wise proverbs, a, a, a few um, a few precepts of wisdom on what we should be doing in these end times. Right. Because um, because right now, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, because right now, you know, what I'm saying we have a um, we have it's easy to be influenced into your own destruction. Right. It's easy to take the wisdom of of a man and throw away your own common sense. Right. The most high, if he's waking you up into this truth, if he's giving you eyes to see, ears to hear, to know who you are and what your heritage is. The Most High did that. He also gave you a level of common sense, right? For example, everybody goes to the scripture. How can I? How can I know what I'm reading unless some man guide me, right? Yes, Philip did guide the eunuch, but what did the Spirit say at the end of that message? The Spirit said, "Peter, I got it from here," and the Spirit took over. So guess what? The Spirit is these words. He said, "These words are Spirit. These words are true," right? It says the law is spiritual. So we finna go into the law. We finna go into the spirit, into the book and see whether or not we are crazy if we prepare. Right. Or whether or not we lack faith if we prepare. All right. So let's get into it, man. Amos chapter three and verse seven reads, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. What does that tell us? It tells us, okay, first of all, we know we're his servants, right? For Jacob, let's get it real quick. Isaiah 45 and 5. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 5. <clears throat> let's get it real quick. He reveals things to his servants, the prophets. So who are his servants? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse five. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. We know we're the ones that get in our heritage back. Verse six, that they may know that from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none beside me. I am the Lord. Salakia. Maybe I didn't want this. Wanted. Salakia. Salakia. Hold on, bear with me real quick. Let me see if this is it. So lucky, my mind is going blank right now, but if somebody could, you know what I'm saying, drop it in there where he says, Jacob, my servant, right? And Israel, mine elect. All right, so we know we the servants. We know we're the prophets, right? And we go out there, highways and byways, we go out there, social media, and what do we do? We preach the word, and some people mock us for it, right? So we can go to, um, I'm going to stay on topic. I was going to go somewhere else, but I'm going to stay on topic, right? So Amos 3 and 7 says, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. What does that mean? That means we have a cheat code. That means he, he's going to send us a word before he sends it to the rest of the world. Right before it hits Fox News, before it hits CNN, we know what's finna happen. We know what's going on in the world. So why would he give us a cheat code? Why would he give us um, the playbook um, bef before the game and we not use it? Why would he give us a recipe book to make a feast and we don't use it? We go, we we ask our friend, you know what I'm saying? Why would he do that and we not using it? We got profits today and we're not using them. All right. 
You know what I'm saying? So Amos 3 and 7 is how we're going to start that thing off. Keep that in mind. Amos 3 and 7. Proverbs, let's go to Proverbs 26, 13. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 13. Right? Proverbs 26 and verse 13. And we're going to read through 16. Right? The slothful man. What does slothful mean? You know what a sloth is? A sloth is a slow moving animal. So if you're a slothful man, that means you're a slow moving person. That means you are lazy. Right? That means you're lethargic. It means that you're, you're, you, you are, you know what I'm saying? You're that type of person that'll sleep all day if you had the chance to. You're that person that would, if you had the option to not work, you would sit on the couch and get fat. You're slothful. You're that person that has to wait for somebody else to do it so you can see how it's done before you get up and do it yourself. That's a slothful person, right? So Proverbs 26 and 13, the slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the street, right? A slothful man is going to see danger. A slothful man, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times slothful men, they know they know right from wrong. A, a slothful man knows what he's supposed, a lazy man knows what he's supposed to be doing, right? But they don't do nothing about it, right? So it says a slothful man say, if there's a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets, right? So he closes himself in the door. He doesn't do nothing about it. Verse 14, as the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful man upon his bed. He finds a reason to not go out. He finds a reason to stay inside. He finds a reason to stay in his bed. Right, and I'm going to break this down on why I'm going here. Verse 15. The slothful man hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. Right? 16. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit. This is the point. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. So what does that mean? A sluggard, right? A lazy person is wiser in his own conceit, meaning... All, he convinces himself of what's right and what's wrong. He convinces himself that, no, I don't need to. I don't need to prepare because the most high got me. Right. He's going to find the precepts to back up faith and back up this, that and the third. Right. He's wiser in his own conceits. than seven men. It could be seven men that can render a reason. Seven men can go to the scripture and be like, I don't know, bro. Look what this say. It seemed like they was preparing. Right. It seems like God's not against preparation. <laughs> it seems, you know, what I'm saying. But he's wise in his own conceit, so he's not going to listen to them, right? And that's a, that's a type of laziness. That's a type of slothfulness, right? There is no reason why, um, there is no reason, for example, let's, let's keep going real quick. Proverbs 21, Proverbs 21 and 12. 21 verse 12. La'a, la'a. La ah, la la ah. This is not the place to um. We not asking for donations on the Sabbath day either. This is not the place for that. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, right. So let's move on. Proverbs twenty one and twelve. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. So it's pretty. It's wise, right? We could say it's wise to consider the house of the wicked. If you consider the house of the wicked, you understand uh, what the wicked might do to you. Considering the house of the wicked, you understand what um, what they deem is a holy day so you don't do it no more. You understand what they uh, how they speak so you don't speak that way. You understand what they might do to you so you prepare yourself for what they might do to you, right? Even though you consider it and that's a wise thing to do, God, yes. But God overthrow the wicked for their wickedness. So God will overthrow them. If you got faith, it's nothing that you can do, but we can prepare. But at the end of the day, who's the one that's going to overthrow them? It's God. Right. So I say I say all that. Right. To say this. What? You are not being you. You're not lesser in faith for preparation. You're actually a wise person. Right. A lot of brothers and sisters will have you believe that you are. That you're that you are um, you're lacking faith. <laughs> a lot of people will let, led you to believe that you're a bug out, that you're crazy. You know what I'm saying? But um, like we read before, 
you don't want to be a sluggard and 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 there's multiple reasons for you to um you know what I'm saying uh prepare because you can be doing the work right you can be out there on the highways and byways you could be making videos you could be fasting praying and still preparing so that does not tell you that you're lacking faith that's just you being wise so if you don't do that you are slick you are being lazy you're being slothful you're making up a reason like the slothful man right to go onto your bed uh I'm not going to worry about it that's going to your bed you making a reason to go to your bed, right? So we gotta be prepared when we see things in the news talking about um, talking about food shortages. We read in the word that there's gonna be a famine. In the first Egypt, there was famine, right? When we when we see stuff like viruses and sicknesses, right? We read in the word that that perilous times is coming. He says he's going to reveal that to his servants, his prophets first. We knew that before it hit the news, so we should be the most prepared for it. Right. We shouldn't be saying to us, to each brother and sister. Now, nah, you don't need to prepare for it. The Lord's going to make a way. The Lord will make a way. But does he make a way for slothful people? Does he make a way for sluggards? Like I said, you know, what I'm saying, for example, I do the work. I go out and street teach. You know, what I'm saying I preach the word on the highways and byways. I preach the word on social media. I try to raise my family uh, to to serve the Lord. You feel me? I, I witness at, on my job. I, so and I'm, I'm also preparing if the Lord take away what I prepared and give it to somebody else. That was his plan. But I'm going to do what the book says is wise to do. All right. So let's move on. Uh, Proverbs 22 and verse three. Proverbs 22 and verse three. A prudent man. If you don't know what the word prudent means, prudent means um, one that looks ahead. If you're a prudent, that means you're always thinking about the next step, right? You're always, uh, you're never complacent about where you are. You're always planning ahead, right? That's what the world calls it today, planning ahead, one that plans ahead. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. A, a prudent man sees evil coming. He sees a virus coming. He sees lockdowns coming. He sees, um, he sees chaos and riots. He sees all that coming. And what does he do? And hideth himself, Right? But the simple pass on and are punished, right? So are you prudent if you see that stuff happening and you don't hide yourself? What does it look like to hide yourself? First of all, we could take it literal, right? If you hide yourself in your house because you see riots and lockdowns and stuff coming, hey, you can only go in your house for so long without food and water, especially if you have a family. If you have a family, who are we to tell brothers and sisters don't stock up. If you stock up, you're crazy. If you get a bug out bag, you're crazy. It's people with grown with, with it's grown people out here with kids, with a wife, some of us with multiple wives. And you telling them, don't worry about it. The most high going to take care of you. It's people out here with families and you're telling them, don't stress about it. The most high going to take care of you. We know that the most high is going to take care of us. But wisdom tells us that we foresee evil. And we hide ourselves from it. Yes, the Most High is going to overthrow the wicked. But wisdom tells us in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, right, in Luke, which we're going to go over, that it's wise to prepare. All throughout the scriptures, it's wise to prepare. I know brothers and sisters are telling you otherwise, but guess what? People have families. You will be crazy to tell your brother or your sister, don't prepare. You're crazy for preparing. If I got if I got an infant, I got a five year old. What do I look like telling them? Hey, look, I don't need to stock up because the moment they shut stuff down, I'm that slugger that said there's a line in the street and I went to my bed. You feel me? So let's keep let's, let's keep reading. Let's get some more examples of wisdom uh, on this topic. Let's get some more examples. So Second Corinthians two and eleven. This is the book of Second Corinthians, chapter two and verse eleven. Reads. Second Corinthians two and eleven reads, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. If we know what Satan's finna do, and <laughs> if we know, if we know what the spirit of Satan's finna influence these people to do, mad men sparing none, right? Why would I not buy me a gun? Why would I not buy protection? If we know that people's finna be rioting, we know that 
the, the food on shelves is finna, you know what I'm saying, decrease. And we know that they're finna stop all these shipments of ships and trucks. Why would I not prepare myself? Why am I crazy for having canned goods if I have a family? Right? We have to be wise. Like I said, a lot of us, if you have eyes to see, ears to hear, and you've woken up into this truth, right? God also gave you a level of common sense. So why, your common sense, right? For example, in the book of Maccabees, right? They said, we're not going to fight on the Sabbath day. And they all got slaughtered. Because you know what? That, that was them being righteous over much. They was being righteous over much. Because I know each and every one of those people in the back of their mind, they was like, man, if we don't fight, you know, these Greek people, don't, they don't give a dang. You feel me? <laughs> they might come in and kill us, but maybe it'll be a worthy death. But in the back of their head, the Most High gave them common sense. Which is why after that happened, they say, from here on out, we will fight on the Sabbath day. We won't go out. That's, that's doing well. Fighting for our cause is doing well on the Sabbath day. You feel me? So with that in mind, it's okay to prepare. Like I said, you can do the work and prepare at the same time. Right? I'm not saying don't do the work. I'm not saying don't have faith, but have that and prepare. And if he take it away from you, he just take it away from you. Right. If you got to be on the move, you just got to be on the move and you you never know. Maybe the house that you stocked up. Right. Might be a blessing for another brother or a sister. That's in the truth, because instead of buying menorahs and chauffeurs and you, you already got one. You already got one staff. You already got one chauffeur. Why you got to buy three more? Why you got to buy a menorah for each room? That's not going to help you. Right. In the times that we're in. You buying all that and, and at the same time, you telling brothers and sisters, don't prepare, don't get no bug out back, right? Who's the crazy one? The per the Shalom, Shalom, all praises to the most high. What's up? I, I know y'all finna go out there and do the work, but um, you know what I'm saying? Who the one that's crazy? Uh, are you crazy for buying, uh, going to Target and buying a menorah that's in the uh, kitchen aisle? You feel me? And putting that in your kitchen. Are you crazy? Or, or is the person that has a, a family, three kids, two dogs, and a wife, maybe has two wives, is he crazy for preparing for his family for lockdowns to come? I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Ecclesiastes is, is some sharp wisdom now. So we finna get some sharp wisdom from um, Solomon. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Right? Let every man be persuaded in his own mind, though. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 19. A feast is made, Salakia. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Oh, con, con, con. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. A feast is made for laughter, right? And wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. We got brothers and sisters, first of all, didn't the Most High say um, it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting? And we see the example with Daniel when Daniel fasted, um, when Daniel fasted at the beginning of the month, I mean, at the beginning of the year, right, for a month. Meaning what? He skipped the Passover. He Instead of going to the Passover, he fasted, right? He was mourning, right? So it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of feasting. So when we read this, it says a feast is made for laughter. Yes, we got all these holy days. A feast is made for laughter. Yes, we can enjoy our brothers and sisters and gather together, right? And wine maketh merry, right? But money answereth all things. I don't care what you say. In this sick world, we're, 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 we're subject to settled debts. If you subject to settled debts, you got to pay. You got money answer all things. You got bills to pay. You got, you got kids to feed. You got dogs to feed. You got you got a wife to feed. You got yourself to feed. Money answer of all things. So yeah, all that stuff is fine and dandy. Brothers and sisters can tell you keep the faith. Just keep doing the holy days. Just keep doing the law, statutes, commandments. Most high gonna take care of you. I agree with that. But money do answer all things, right? You can go to these feast days. You can gather with your brothers and sisters. But money does answer all things, right? That's thus saith the that stuff that thus saith the Lord. Not saying that to love money, not saying that at all, right? Let's go to Proverbs 14 and um, 15. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 15. Proverbs 14 and verse 15. 
The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man, remember what I said a prudent man is. A prudent man is somebody that plans ahead. That's what the world says today. Someone who plans ahead. Prudent means to foresee something. It means to um, always be looking to the future, right? I would say that I'm a very prudent man, even in the world, because before I enter something, and I was just telling my, my rib uh, the other day, I always weigh out the good and the bad. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? Before I get married, I picture my wife leaving me and I picture it going great. Before I um, have a baby, I picture, you know what I'm saying? It, it could go left. They could come out sick or God could bless me. Right. But I'm a prudent man and I'm willing to take thus saith the Lord. Man's goings are of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to weigh out my options. That's being prudent. Right. So that you're not surprised. All right. So let me keep reading. Proverbs 14 and 15. The simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. So the simple sit down and watch lives, 20 live streams on YouTube 24 seven. The simple watch brothers and sisters make memes and laugh about it on Twitter and Instagram about, oh, you got a bug out bag. Oh, he bugging. He got a bug out bag. That means he bugged out. You know what I'm saying? The simple's going to believe every word. But a prudent man is going to look wise to his going. A prudent man is going to sit back and say, yeah, it was a funny post, but nigga, I'm preparing. I got I got people to feed. I got I got lives to take care of. You know what I'm saying? And and just in case I do got a bug out bag. It's not it's not over the top, but it's the necessities. You know what I'm saying? Who wants to be in the wilderness? Who wants to be thrown out there with nothing? You know what I'm saying? Even if, if you are thrown out there with nothing, if that's your lot, most high going to take care of you. He take care of those who love him and keep his commandments. He shows mercy to them. Right. But out of Proverbs, out of Ecclesiastes. Right. Wisdom. Tell us what? Prepare. Right. So let's keep reading. Luke 14 and 28. We go on New Testament, Old Testament. It don't matter. It's a continuum. Luke 14 and 28. This is the book of Luke chapter 14 and verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. Right. So we know that he's going to do nothing without revealing his secrets to the servants of prophets. So before Fox News, CNN, before um, before all of these things hit the news stream. Right. Before the doctors get their information to give us, before the celebrities start promoting their information. We already know because we read, right? It says um, wisdom and stability. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of thy times. What's wisdom and knowledge? It's this book, right? So who, right? Let's read this again. For which of you intending to build a tower sit if not down first and count if the cost? If I see all these things coming, thus saith the Lord, and then I see it, right? I see it on TV as well. And I'm like, dang, the most high, you know what I'm saying? He showed that to me before it came out on TV. If I see it here and then I see it there, I'm going to sit down and be like, what can I do to be prepared for in that day? Right. What can I do so I can be in the best position in that day? Whether he have sufficient to finish it. Right. So you got to count the cost. You got to you got to you got to be able to weigh out your options. Counting the cost is like um, it's like when they teach you in economics class opportunity cost. If I make this move, I might suffer here, but I'll profit here. If I make this move, mm, I'm going to have too many losses, right? So that's counting the cost, the opportunity cost, right? So weigh out your cost. Count the cost. Let's read um, Genesis 14 and 19. Genesis 14 and 19. All right, because we got a lot of brothers, too, that say, hey, brothers is going out onto the highways and byways, and they got guns. That's that they lack faith. Why is it when you need protection? Right. It seems like the P's. If you if you do something that start with a P, you know, what I'm saying you bugged out, you prepare, you're bugged out. You protect yourself. You bugged out. Why is that? Why is that? Right. Genesis 14 and verse 19. No, 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 no. 14 and 14. Right. Because a brother had hit me up on Instagram. It was like, uh. A brother hit me up on Instagram pretty much talking about guns. And he said, bro, he said, I don't think it's time to have guns yet. Um, I think the Lord will tell us when it's that time. From now on, I just carry a knife with me. 
I said, bruh. I told him straight up. I said, Ock, a knife is a sidearm, just like a gun is a sidearm. So what is the difference between you carrying a weapon that could kill somebody and me carrying a weapon that could kill somebody? That's just your perception on weapons. <laughs> this, that's just your preference on weapons. A gun can run out of bullets, by the way. A knife can always kill. You can always kill. A, a, a knife ain't going to run out of bullets. I said they're both sidearms. They're both used in the military. So why can you can have your knife and I can't have a gun to protect myself? Make it make sense, right? All right, so let's go to Genesis 14 and 14. And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, right? When we hear that they're going to come from the children of Israel, when we hear that they, there's going to be riots, when we hear that there's going to be mad men sparing none, right? And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, right? Born, no, he told his servants, don't worry about it. The most high going to bring him back in one piece. Don't worry about it. Just keep the faith. No, he said he armed his trained servants, right? Born in, and his, his servants were just um, slothful people. No, they were trained servants. You got to to train. That means what? You have to prepare. All right. Born in his own house, 318, 318 men and pursued them unto Dan. He went back and got his brother, right? So that's what a that's what a wise man is going to do. A wise man is going to train, prepare, and arm himself, right, for things to come. You could say that's lacking faith, but I feel like you show your faith by your works. That's just me. You feel me? If he give his if he give he does nothing without revealing it to his servants first, right? If that's the case, why would he do that and expect us to do nothing? Why why would he show us that? We can see the danger and go back to our bed. That doesn't make sense, right? So check this out. Let's go to um, Luke 14, Salakia. Luke 22 and 35. Luke 22 and 35. Luke 22. This is the book of Luke chapter 22. In verse 35, Luke 22 and verse 35. And he said unto them, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Hey, look, so guess what? There's a time and place for everything, right? When Christ was making disciples, he told them not to have a coat. He told them not to have nothing but sandals. He told them not to have any money in their purse. And he's asking him right now, when I told you all that, did you lack anything? And they said, no, we didn't lack nothing. But there's a time and a place for everything, which is why he says this. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise, his scrip and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So now he's saying that purse I made you leave behind all that money. Yeah, yeah, go get that. You're going to need it, right? That script, that Bible, guess what? Uh, I know the Spirit's going to speak through you, but make sure you have a Bible in hand. Go get that. And he's saying, hey, look, everything else, your garment, the coat that I said, you can have one coat, go ahead. The, the weather is, you know what I'm saying, the weather, but go ahead and sell that. And now go buy you a sword. There's a time and a season for everything, right? So we would be crazy to think, as time worsens, we don't need to prepare. That's crazy. That's madness. That That is slothful, right? And I hate to flip the script back on brothers and sisters that say that you're bugged out for preparing, but that's slothful. Because like I said, you can do the work. You can, on the highways and byways, on social media posts, making videos, talking to people on your job, talking to people you know what I'm saying? Here and there. You could do all that stuff and still prepare, right? Instead of spending your money on folly, instead of spending your money on Cuban link chains to go to camp, instead of spending your money on a, a new staff, you know what I'm saying? Spend your money on things that's going to help you, you know what I'm saying? Make it out of these troublous times. Con, I'm going to get there too. It's on here. It's on here. I was going to get there. Don't be like the five virgins that didn't have any oil in their lamps, right? Because you don't want to be that brother or sister saying, hey, give me some stuff out of your bug out bag. You don't want to you don't want to be asking for oil from somebody else. You want to have your own oil, right? Because when that door is shut, right, 
when that when that destruction is coming, you know what I'm saying? It's a short time. So what I say? Um, I said Ecclesiastes three, right? Because we're talking about a time and a season. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. Here we go. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, and verse number 1. And it reads To everything there is a season and time to every purpose under the heaven. So there is a time where you build up your faith, right? And there's a time where you use your faith to produce works. It's a time and a season for everything. Right. So it's a time to build up your faith and it's a time to produce works with your faith. It's a time to reap what you sow. And there's a time to sow so that you can reap. Let's read. Right. Verse two, a time to be born and a time to die. Right. Like I said, if it's up to you to die, hey, the most high just wanted to take you out a time to plant. Right. When you plant something, you're preparing for the harvest. Right. It's a time to prepare and a time to pluck up that which is planted. It's a time to to gather some stuff. Right. It's time to reap the benefits of what you prepared. But if you don't prepare, you're not going to reap the benefits. You're going to be like the five foolish virgins. So like you. Verse three, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. Remember, count the cost. If you build in something, verse four, a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. This is the point. Verse five, a time to cast away stones, right? What does that mean? A time to cast away stones, we could say um, that's uh, rejecting family members, rejecting um, false doctrine, rejecting, you know what I'm saying, um, rejecting um, something that you don't need, casting away stones, right? Or flip side, it could be you um, casting uh, your stones, right? To people spreading the gospel, building your faith. This is the point though. Time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. There's a time to gather, right? So when we think about preparing or getting bug out bags or stocking up food, that's a, we're in a time where we are supposed to gather stones, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? We can see Joseph when he gave his wisdom to Egypt. We didn't touch on that, but we can see Joseph when he gave his wisdom to Egypt. He was telling them how to weather the storm that was coming, the famine that was coming. And we are going through the same famine. This is spiritual Egypt. Right. So the same thing we got to prepare, just like Joseph had the wisdom, the common sense to prepare. Right. Everything. Hey, Romans 15 and four. The things written a fourth time was written for our learning. So a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Right. So let's uh, keep reading. Right. So now we get to the point right where this was um, the climax of of this lesson. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my rib, she, you know, what I'm saying went ahead and uh, she typed it out, you know, what I'm saying through the spirit. But we're going to go over it. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about these five foolish virgins. Let's talk about these five foolish virgins. Are you foolish? Or are you wise? Right? There's going to be some wise. There's going to be some foolish. Right? So Matthew 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Right? To get out of Jacob's trouble... Right. Meaning you're going to be alive and remain to get out of Jacob's trouble means what? It means you're pretty wise. Right. Wisdom and knowledge was the stability of your time. Right. So you got to be a wise virgin. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. So you might Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. You might be, a, you know, you might be a virgin, meaning you, you might be clean. You might be in this truth. But are you wise, though? Are you prudent? Are, do you have common sense? Do you have eyes to see? Do you have ears to hear? Do you have understanding? Right? So you might be pure in this thing. You might be called a virgin, but went forth to meet the bridegroom, right? Or you might be ready to be married. 
You know what I'm saying? Uh, biblically speaking, a virgin was somebody that was ready to be married. Right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? So, biblically speaking, a virgin was um, somebody that a woman that was uh, of age and ready to be married. You know what I'm saying? So you might be ready to be you might have your white robe on. You know what I'm saying? You might be looking beautiful. You know, you're keeping the law, statutes and commandments. But are you wise? Right. Or are you foolish? We have a lot of brothers and sisters in the truth. That's foolish. A lot of brothers and sisters in the truth. That's not wise. All right. So which one are you? And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Verse three, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Right. Oil, we can say, is what knowledge, understanding. Oil is also anointing. Right. So five of them took extra um, wisdom. Five of them took extra anointing with them. The, the other five, they thought they had enough. They thought because their faith was so big that, you know, if you take extra oil, man, you bugged out. You know what I'm saying? The, the most high can he the most high can fill these uh, lanterns up with more oil. You know what I'm saying? They were foolish. They were, they were trying God. They were tempting God. If the Most High sent his servants, right, and he sends his servants, he doesn't do nothing without revealing it first to his servants. Guess what? We got to take heed to that and be wise and be like, okay, you're telling us this for a reason. Let me prepare. Let me gather stones. Let me count the cost. Let me be prudent and foreseeth evil. You know what I'm saying? We can't just because somebody tell us it's crazy to prepare. You know what I'm saying? We can't just... Be like, nah, I'm not going to worry about that. And then leech on to the next Israelite that got everything prepared. You know what I'm saying? Verse four. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So they had oil in their lamps and they took extra oil. Right. They prepared. They heard about the king coming, the bridegroom coming. They wanted to, to be married. Right. So guess what they did? They prepared. Verse five. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Hey, look, the bridegroom was, you know, he was trying to get dapper himself. He said, I got to prepare myself for this, these beautiful virgins, right? Verse six, in the midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, right? It was probably a trumpet or something to let them know, hey, look, the bridegroom cometh. Go get, go ye out to meet him, right? And we can always say this, right? We can always say, we can say, um, and here, this is talking about the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. But, you know, if we put ourselves in this position now, you need that extra preparation to be ready for when Jacob's trouble happens. You need that extra preparation to be ready for when lockdowns happen, right? When you lose your job, when you um, when food is not on the shelves, right? You need that. So you need to be like the wise the five wise virgins and have that extra oil in your lamp, have that extra food in your pantry, have that extra gas in your garage, have that extra water sitting around, have that protection for when people is like madman sparing none pertaining to second Esdras, right? So, and at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose, all 10 of them stood up and trimmed their lamps. They like, okay, it's time to get it. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. Right. So as they're making their way, the five foolish versions that did not prepare. Right. That did not put extra oil aside. They were asking the other versions. Can we get a little bit of your oil? That would be like the Israelites that are seen as virgins. Right. They're keeping the law, statutes, commandments. They're ready for the bridegroom. Right. They're seen as virgins. But what? When, when all hell break loose. They're hitting up all the Israelites. They knew that they they called bug outs. They called all these Israelites bug outs. But now they're reaching out to these brothers because the faith that they have is little. They found out the faith that they had was little and the faith of the people that was preparing was big. Right. Because faith without works is dead. Your faith is going to produce works. Joseph had faith, which is why he had the wisdom to prepare before the famine. Right. These virgins. They had faith, which is why they had wisdom to put oil aside. Right. It produced works. They were not slothful. Sometimes you have to do extra work. You feel me? For our lamps are gone out. Verse nine. But the wise answer saying not so. Right. Lest there be not enough for us and you. So this is I, when I think of this. I also think about um, not casting your, your pearls before swine. It's going to come a time when there's a famine of the word where he shuts up the mouth of the prophets. Right. And we're not going to give to anybody, family, 
friends. We're not going to give to nobody. If you didn't do your work, if you didn't prepare yourself, you know what I'm saying? We don't got time to waste for you. You know what I'm saying? You didn't prepare and I prepared and you want to leech off of me? No, you're a slothful. The Bible says you're worse than an infidel, right? You're a slugger. You knew this was happening just like I knew this was happening. You are a foolish virgin. So the wise virgin said what? No, you can't have none of our oil, right? Reading on. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. You better go and, you know what I'm saying, do what you can do to sell your purse. You know what I'm saying? You better sell your script. You better sell your, your garment to get, your, get what you need because, hey, look, we, we headed to the bridegroom. Right. Jacob's trouble is kicked off. Right. Riots have riots have started. I'm locked in my house. Ain't nobody getting in. I'm protected. Me and mine. You feel me? So reading on verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Right. Store up your faith for yourselves. Right. Store up your faith. Right. So guess what? Pre prepare um, physically and prepare um, with your faith as well. When you store up your faith, you're getting knowledge and wisdom from this book, right? You got to understand how to move in these times, right? That doesn't mean don't do nothing and just say, I have the faith. I have the faith. And when all hell break loose and you you still saying, I have the faith, your family looking at you crazy. You the man of the house and the family looking at you crazy because you didn't prepare, right? So, I'm doing this video real quick, man, just to tell y'all, hey, look, you're not crazy for preparing. You're not you're not bugged out if you prepare. Right. Our forefathers prepared. You know what I'm saying? Our forefathers um, stocked up. Our forefathers put stuff aside. Right. That's wisdom and knowledge out of the book. And it'll be the stability of our times. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I'm your brother Azrael from the hopeful elect. Um. And I pray everybody has a blessed day. Shalom.